All right, the ASD is a hole between the left atrium and the right atrium in the atrial septum. Most of the time, the shunt has left to right flow. If the pressure is really high in the right heart, which is called Eisenmenger's disease, the shunt will reverse and be right to left. There are three types of ASDs. The most common is the ostium secundum atrial septal defect. The secundum ASD is in the middle of the atrial septum. The ostium primum atrial septal defect is near the AV valves and can be associated with a congenital defect called AV canal. And we'll cover that later. The sinus venosus atrial septal defect is at the very top of the atrial septum and can be associated with total or partial anomalous pulmonary venous return, which I will try to cover much later on because that's probably one of the most difficult ones. Um, but anyways, all of these defects, there is, there is one more that's rarely mentioned, and that's a coronary sinus ASD where the flow goes into the coronary sinus. And the only way to determine whether, whether or not there is a coronary sinus defect is to um, image the coronary sinus probably in the four chamber view and see if it's dilated. If it's significantly dilated, then there's probably an ASD there. So um, it's just hard to pick up flow there. So anyhow, let's move on. So there are the three types of an ASD. This is a view if you are looking directly at the um, atrial septum. So if this were the, you know, the entire atrial septum here, you know, obviously here's the SVC up here. So that's this area here. In the IVC, in, um, inferior vena cava, and that's here going in. So a sinus venosus can be in this area down here, I'm coloring yellow, and also in this area up here where I'm coloring yellow. And then, of course, the secundum defect here in the center of the atrial septum. This, like I said, is the most common ASD. And then the ostium primum is, like I said, near the AV valves. So you can almost say that this is representative of the tricuspid valve here, this little line. Um, and um, coronary sinus ASD would be here, but you would it's rare to see it on, uh, on echo. Really what you're looking for is a dilated um, coronary sinus, and then you can assume that there might be an ASD there. Um, there are other things that can cause that, such as an anomalous pulmonary venous return going to the coronary sinus. We see that every once in a while, so um, don't be fooled. It's something that probably will have to be determined in the cath lab. So let's go on to the next one. Oops. All right, so here's another view of some of the uh, looking directly into the right atrium. This is more or less a little bit, a little bit uh, more colorful view. Um, with the uh, pen here, I mean, right here is the secundum ASD. That's going to be the most popular, the one you're going to see the most. And then up here, the sinus venosus, and down here. So it can show up in either place. Um, here's the coronary sinus, again, the most rare one you'll see. And then the primum, which will be associated a good portion of the time with AV canal. So just to reiterate all of it, I wanted to do that. OK, for some reason, I'm having trouble advancing the slide. All right, and the third view of the same thing. So this points out everything. So, you know, here's your sinus venosus, and you can take a look at all of these. A foraminal valley or a PFO, there's a, a lot of, I don't know, I wouldn't call them arguments, but discussions as to whether that is truly a ASD. It is shunting flow, so I, I don't know. I kind of think it is, but... You know, an a, a PFO 
is really a flap of tissue that opens and closes um, during the normal heartbeat and uh, let's flow go through it it's a it's a holdover from the uh, inner utero or the utero utero uh, when mom has the baby in her stomach how's that for smart um, it's a holdover from that and it its job is to help shunt blood from the right side of the heart to the left side of the heart and then it reverses as uh, the baby's born and uh, hopefully with you know within 24 to 48 hours that closes but I've seen them on patients as old as 72 I think was the oldest one I saw so um, and then obviously the AV or the osteum primum Here's the tricuspid valve right here. You can see all three leaflets. And the coronary sinus defect, um, which would appear here, but again, like I said, a little harder to show up on the uh, on an echo. Move on. Now here are some of the views you can see in ASD. Now this one would be, um, a child who had a significant enlargement of the right side because of the size of the ASD. If you were measuring this ASD, you would probably measure from here to here. So that is a significant ASD. It's very large. Here's a shot where you can see what size the hole is. And uh, that's a very important picture if you can get it. It's kind of an, on a short axis plane. Um, that can be used to determine what they'll use to repair the ASD. Um, there is a new device, which I'll show you some pictures of later. It's not too new. It's an Amplatzer device. It's used to close ASDs through the cath lab so they can run a catheter up, deploy it, and it um, closes the ASD. There have been some issues with it uh, over the years, but um, it is used to close an ASD in the cath lab if they think they can do it. Um, if the ASD is too big, which I think would be the case here, um, they will go in and surgically repair it. Sometimes they use a pericardial patch um, where they take a little piece of the pericardium and patch it. Um, other times they'll just use Dacron or whatever, you know, tissue, maybe a um, tissue sample from somewhere else in the sense of like a... Uh, uh, cadaver or whatever but they'll use something to patch it so let's move on so here's a color flow shot of an ASD now I'm not I'm I was having trouble finding pediatric views of the ASD flow so this is what I would call a modified four chamber view it allows for better uh, detection because the flow is more parallel to the transducer so you do see the ASD it looks like it starts here down on the screen here and the flow is obviously going all the way up into the RV you can see it here too so there's a significant amount of flow this is a sizable VSD or ASD I'm sorry and you can see that the right ventricle is very large so that's a sign that you've got a significant ASD on your hands and probably will need to be surgically closed. So let's move on to the next one. Now here's just the uh, subcostal view. This is not this is an adult view, not the pediatric views that we usually use that would be flipped upside down. Um, but pretty much is the same view just upside down. So um, here you can see what looks like the start of an ASD maybe to here and then there there appears to be a little flap of skin now this is the body's way of closing that ASD and it's you know it kind of starts to sprout out from either side of the defect and it will eventually connect and close the ASD on its own um, a lot of times there'll be just a small um, area where um you know that like that that will not have closed and there will be flow now if that flow is not 
uh, significant, then you don't have to worry about it. It'll, you know, either take care of itself or it won't affect the patient. There's a lot of um, literature on uh, um, small ASDs or PFOs even uh, later on in life causing strokes because patients will have um, small blood clots travel up from the legs into the right atrium and cross this ASD or PFO at the right time um, and go into the left side of the heart and go up into the brain and cause a stroke. The problem I have with this theory is the amount of things that have to happen for that particular uh, process. Um, you know, you'd have to have a Valsalva maneuver, which, you know, I hope you're, you know what that is. That's pushing down really hard, almost like you're having a bowel movement. Um, and so you'd be pushing down extremely hard when the clot came into the left atrium or the right atrium. So let's say here's a clot. You push down really hard. That changes the pressure on the right side of the heart and would cause this clot to go here and then out the aorta into the brain. Um, to be honest with you, the timing that would be involved in that, because if this is like a PFO, um, this would be closed most of the time um, when that clot would be entering the atrium. Um, it's just a, uh, it's just my opinion that it, I think a lot of times we were always looking for a PFO because a patient had a stroke and, um, you know, it was, yeah, either most of the time they didn't have a PFO, so that that couldn't have been the reason, but. Um, for a while, we were always doing TEEs on patients with PFOs, and then eventually the insurance companies said, no, 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 don't do that anymore, and of course, then it stopped. So um, it's up to you. It's whatever you believe in and whatever the doc you work for believes, but I'm not a firm believer in a Valsalva maneuver exactly when a clot enters the right atrium. The chances of that are incredible. Maybe me winning the lotto, I think, but... That's my opinion. Take whatever you want. All right, so here's a, a view just of the uh, left, uh, or I'm sorry, the, like a four chamber view, and this would be more of a pediatric view. So you can see all the different chambers, the left ventricle, the left atrium. Here is the atrial septal defect, which is pretty sizable. And you can see I'm kind of coloring here how big it is. Um, and it shows the flow going left to right, which is what we want, because if it's the other way, then we got real problems. Right atrium and the right ventricle. And you can see the right atrium is a little bit enlarged, and so is the right ventricle. So this is probably a sizable atrial septal defect. Now, the thing is, um, with time, if the atrial septum starts to close, where you might see this, uh, hold on one second, let me get this in here, where you might see a small piece of tissue grow from here to here and here to here on its own, and that will reduce the size of blood flow going through here. And if it eventually closes itself and there is no shunting anymore, then the right ventricle and the right atrial size will go down it may not go all the way down to normal, but it'll go down in size. So sometimes we let a patient with an atrial septal defect kind of get a little bit older and see if it closes on its own. Now, if it's an adult and obviously it hasn't closed, then they need to have it repaired. So um, an ASD, a true ASD, not a PFO, there is a bigger chance of a clot crossing that and going and causing a stroke. And if we see this at a younger age, we want to close it before something like that can happen because obviously that could be catastrophic. So you want to avoid that at all cost. All right, just another view. Um, this has all the different vessels and everything in it, but this is a secundum ASD, and you can see the flow going across here. This is a what would be considered a large secundum ASD, and the 
they show a little bit of enlargement for the right atrium and right ventricle but i would think that these would even be bigger because of the size of that just depends upon you know the age of the child um, in this case if this is a newborn with an asd like this there won't be a lot of enlargement of the right ventricle and right atrium but with time they will get bigger so this is something that will probably have to be closed um, but we will watch the child for a while to see if a little you know piece of tissue grows and closes it by itself there's no reason to go in there right away and close it unless it's incredibly big and it just you know is causing the kid to have heart failure so um, next picture now this is a primum ASD which is usually associated with AV canal and AV canal is they also call it endocardial cushion defect which is a um, there's a hole a VSD here and an ASD here so this whole area here is shunting blood back and forth from the left to the right ventricle the primum ASD is almost always associated with this AV canal. I rarely would see a primum ASD on its own. It's just usually a combo thing. So, and that's because the atrial septum grows from, and this is a little embryology, but the atrial septum grows up from the top of the heart down. The ventricular septum grows from the bottom of the heart up. And sometimes they don't make it all the way and that's what causes this large hole in the middle of the heart and like I said that's AV canal and I'll explain that at a later date and have some good pictures of it hopefully so let's move on that's the prime ASD all right here's just another picture this is one of the I don't know who draws these but they're fantastic this is just another shot of secundum ASD which is down here and I'm circling it right now and you can see this would be a case where the right side would be larger than this um, it's a big big ASD so and this obviously gives you all the technology or the uh, names of the structures so if you want to pause it here and take a look you can um, I won't be offended all right, so here's a color flow view um, of an atrial septal defect. And again, you can see the color going through here and heading up towards the right ventricle. Um, this is a rather enlarged right side of the heart. You can see the whole right side of the heart here. This is not the best echo image, but this could be an adult with an ASD too. So sometimes a subcostal of an adult is not easy to get so um, but this is a sizable ASD this looks like it goes from here to here so um, this will probably need to be repaired now the actual flow may be here to here which means that's the only part that might need to be repaired so um, but again that's a secundum ASD so that's what that looks like on color flow and here they point out the coronary sinus in this picture that's why I wanted to show you but this is a um, sinus venosus ASD um, so here's the very top of the heart the left atrium and the right atrium and you can see how the flow would be going now a good portion of the time this is associated with total anomalous pulmonary venous return which is where the pulmonary veins don't go back to the left atrium they go wherever they want to go and I mean that completely they can go into the superior vena cava they can go into the coronary sinus they can go down even further and be way below the heart in the diaphragm area um, it's amazing how how the body will grow these veins so far and just miss the left atrium completely now that's total anomalous venous return now there's also partial anomalous venous return where maybe two of the veins are going to the left atrium but the other two could be going wherever they want to go to so these asds if you see this then it's very important in the suprasternal 
short axis to really try to get the veins in and get a good picture of the left atrium and and the veins going into it I'm, I'm not drawing them in the right places but you want to see four veins at all you know if you can on the picture um, so if you can't see four veins and you see this atrial septal defect then you might want to uh, point that out to the physician because this is something that is better viewed on an MRI or a cath um, to determine where the um, vessels are you know inserted so but that's uh, sinus venosus ES, uh, via ASD not VSD sorry um, hold on a second I'm going to advance the slide there we go now we mentioned quickly um, about closure of uh, ASD using a device in the cath lab and uh, this is that device this is a 3d echo which if you have the equipment and the time to actually do it it's pretty neat um, unfortunately it, it's um, in the beginning it was incredibly hard to do a 3d echo because you had to reconstruct everything and get the right positions they had to be perfect um, now with the improvement of computer technology they can do it live which is fantastic but uh, it does take a good amount of uh, time and effort to learn how to do 3d echo too now this is a uh, crescentic shaped residual defect so they they what they were able to do is deploy the device to close the ASD but there was a residual ASD left here because the device wasn't big enough to close the hole so hopefully this will close on its own this area here and uh, everything will be okay but the device position you know is pretty good it's just that the ASD was very very large so that's what the device looks like and here is uh, what it looks like in a four chamber view before closure obviously here and then after closure and uh, you can see this is a very large it almost looks like um, the atrial septum is incredibly thickened but the device deploys on both sides of the atrial septum it almost looks like an umbrella on this side and then there's just a small connection between the other side and then another umbrella that's deployed and that closes the ASD so in most cases it does work out pretty well in um, they are able to deploy it and it works works well um, you just have to be sure that the ASD is not too big if the ASD is too big you don't want to try to deploy this thing and have it get stuck in the tricuspid valve or something like that because it was too big the ASD was too big so let's move on now here's a subcostal view actually a pediatric view which is what I was looking at and this is the atrial septum here now this is what looks like a flap here and the flow would be going this way they didn't catch the flow um, during diastole when it would be going through um, it looks like this is end diastole um, so you may not be seeing but you can see just a little bit of the flow here and here so there's an ASD there and uh, this is called a subcostal long axis view which is you know your bread and butter in pediatric echo so very important to learn that view and do it well all right ASDs are usually easy to spot using color flow in the subcostal four chamber view um, it's very important to get that view in as well as possible because you want to look for everything from a large ASD to a small PFO and it can be anywhere so you have to pay attention um, secundum ASDs are by far the easiest to spot primum and venous or sinus venosus are much harder to view by echo because a primum ASD is usually associated with AV canal it can be easy to spot if it's large color flow is vital for these diagnoses so I'm just letting you know that these are the 
the things that you will be able to see and won't be able to see. And it's very important to pay attention. All right, I hope that helped. And that's the end. We'll see you in the next one, okay?